Wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Ralston present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in their spacesuits at the base of a volcano on the planet Saturn, searching for a missing scientist. Dr. Ramsey ought to be very close to this spot, Happy. It's such rough ground, it's hard to see more than a few yards. The doctor may have fallen into a crevice. Hey, Commander, listen. What's that rumbling? The ground shaking. It's a volcano. It's going to erupt. We'd better find Dr. Ramsey in a hurry. We're too late, Happy. Get back to the ship. Boiling lava will be pouring down this fountain in a matter of minutes. Yes, sir. Watch your step and hurry. Hey, Commander, our ship is gone. We're trapped. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Sleeping Demon of Saturn. Say, what kind of jet jalopy are we riding in, Captain Tufel? We'll never get to Terra City at this speed. Well, I know what's the matter. This surface car has just got ordinary fuel in it. Let's drive into this filling station here and fill her up with super fuel. Let's try her now. Wow, this jet cycle is supercharged now. Sure thing, it's got super fuel. And space patrollers, there's a lesson in this for you. Ordinary fuel for breakfast, you're just a putt-putt. Super fuel for breakfast, you're supercharged. My advice is eat the super fuel Buzz Corey has in the morning. I mean wheat checks and rice checks, the super cereals that help to supercharge you. Real swell tasting, and they both have that modern bite-sized design for easy eating. So, gang, don't be a putt-putt. Eat the delicious super cereals that help to supercharge you. Rice checks, wheat checks. And remember, inside of every package, there's a mysterious magic space picture. <laughs> And now, today's Space Patrol adventure. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are in the commander's flagship, the Terra 5, approaching the planet Mercury, where a few hours before, a minor quake shook a small section of that innermost planet. There were no casualties and no damage to property. Yet, within the hour, every planetary capital, every scientific laboratory was buzzing with excitement. Furthermore, it caused Commander Corey to make a special trip to Mercury. Why all this interest in a harmless quake? Because it was predicted eight years before, almost to the minute. Intently now, Happy scans the viewscope screen as the cracked and fissured surface of Mercury spins below. We're getting close to the scene of the quake, Commander. I'm afraid it won't look any different than the rest of this part of Mercury, Happy. Well, I suppose not, sir. But I'd like to be able to say that I was one of the first to see the location of the first scheduled quake. <laughs> Uh, didn't the space phone newscast say that the doctor pinpointed the exact location and named the time eight years ago? Dr. Ramsey's predictions may have been just a coincidence. That's why I sent Tongo on ahead to Mercury City to contact him personally. Well, predicting quakes isn't exactly new, is it, sir? I mean, in a general sort of way? Mm, up to now, it's been very general. Scientists have spread their predictions over areas of hundreds of square miles and allowed themselves several years leeway. Assistant Security Chief Tonga calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Tonga calling Commander Corey. Corey here. Go ahead. I've contacted Dr. Ramsey, Commander. He's in Mercury City. Good. Did you talk to him about this Mercury quake? Yes. He says the news reports are basically true. He did predict the exact time and location of this quake eight years ago. Well, tell him I'll see him as soon as I reach Mercury City. That'll be in about 30 minutes. Corey out. Commander, look. There's something down there in that clearing. What does it look like? A wrecked spaceship. A wrecked spaceship? Yes, sir. I'll set the ship down. You get our spacesuits out of the locker. All right, half into the ship. Yes, sir. Be careful you don't puncture your spacesuit on that jagged metal. Yes, sir. Commander, there's a man in here. Collapsed over the instrument panel. Now, let's take a look at him. Let's get him to our ship. He needs oxygen. I've got 
check with Mercury City Space Control, sir. They're clearing Space Lock 3 for us. Good, Ham. How's our passenger, sir? Oh, he'll be all right. He's resting back aft. It was close. If we'd been a few minutes later, he'd have been finished. What made him crash? Effective rocket equalizers. Lucky he wasn't killed. He told me he bought the ship at a bargain. Some bargain? Yeah. From nose to stern, that ship was fitted with obsolete equipment. Cheap metals covered with endurium plating. He tells me he bought it from a man named Fran Gresham. Fran Gresham? The name sounds familiar. He was working a petty swindle game on Mars a few months ago. Our agents broke it up, but they couldn't get anything on Gresham. Well, there's nothing petty about selling defective spaceships. That's potential murder. And this time, we're really going after it. Well, Gresham, did you close the deal? Uh, our client insisted on inspecting the ship. The only thing we found in working order was a danger sign in the atomic power compartment. That's the third sale you've muffed this last week, Gresham. It's costing me quite a bit of money to keep up a front here in Mercury City. What we need to do is create a demand for small spaceships. Something that will make people want a ship and not be too particular about the condition it's in. Or the price. That's a large order, Shrike. I you know. If we could start a fake uranium rush, say to one of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn, or some kind of panic. Panic. That's it. Get people frightened and then offer them a means of escape. How are we going to get them frightened? And of what? Did you hear about this scientist who predicted a quake here on Mercury? I heard something about it. I didn't pay much attention. His name is Ramsey. Eight years ago, he predicted a quake in a certain part of Mercury and called it almost to the minute. The quake hit yesterday. So what? Suppose we pay him some money and get him to predict what city is going to be hit with a quake within the next few weeks. We can sell those ships in a few hours. Suppose there isn't going to be a quake near a city. There won't have to be one. The very fact that this guy Ramsey is making a test near a city will make people worried. Then we'll start a few rumors. Mike, I think you've got something. I'll call on this Doc Ramsey. And I think I know just the city that I do. I'm all ready, sir. There's a service car in front of headquarters waiting to take us to Dr. Ramsey's apartment. Oh, we'll wait here a few minutes, Happy. I'm expecting a report from Tonga and this man Gresham. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, uh, how's the man we rescued from the wrecked ship? Oh, he'll be all right. But he's in bad shape financially. No company would insure that ship of his because he didn't have a space patrol inspection certificate. Mm. So the poor guy has to stand the loss himself. Mm -hmm. It's an expensive lesson for him. Commander. Oh, yes, Tonga. I haven't been able to find out much about this Grand Gresham, but I've learned one thing. He's here in Mercury City, or at least he was within the last few days. Where can we locate him? I don't know. But he's been seen with a man named Rupert Shrike. Oh, well, probably he's planning to sell Shrike one of his broken-down ships. No, Happy. Apparently, Shrike is back in Gresham, helping him to put up a front to impress clients. Tonga, assign two of our agents to tail Shrike. Find out how he contacts Gresham, and we can get a line on them. All right, Commander. Okay, Happy. Let's get over to Doctor. Mr. Stark, I find your offer very attractive. <laughs> well, then you'll accept, Doctor? Well, I'd like a little time to think it over. You see, I uh, hardly expected to be called on to predict quakes for a private person. Tell me, Mr. Strike, what region are you interested in? Kepler City on Saturn. I have some property there. Okay. You don't need to worry, Mr. Strike. Kepler City is safe probably for centuries to come. Well, then you've already tested it? Uh, years ago. But you can rely on the assurances of other fake experts. But Kepler City is fairly near a volcano, Doctor. I know. The sleeping demon. That volcano is all but inactive. Sends up a little smoke occasionally. Even if it did erupt, which is unlikely, the city is in no danger. But suppose a quake shifted the strata under the cone. Wouldn't that cause a violent eruption? It would take a fairly violent quake to do that. And that's most improbable. Make a test anyway. I I'll raise my offer to 2,000 credits. Mm, no, Mr. Syke, thank you. Uh, any further test would be a waste of time. Look here, Ramsey. I came here with a legitimate offer. Don't pull this high-toned devotion to science business on me. I'm not interested, Mr. Syke. Now, will you excuse me? You listen to me, Ramsey. I can make you mighty anxious to make that test if you don't listen to reason. Is that a threat? Take it as a threat if you want to. I've made up my mind. You're going to make that test. If I have to use force, get rid of him. I'm not leaving here till I get what I want. 
Very well. Dr. Ramsey? Yes, sir. Come in. Commander, this gentleman is uh, Mr. Strike. How do you do, Mr. Strike? Nice to meet you, Commander. Mr. Strike feels he has urgent business with me. We can discuss it later. On the contrary, I'll discuss it right now. Commander, I think this is something you should know. I never saw this man until a few minutes ago. Yes, he comes into my apartment and threatens to force That's me. enough of that, Ramsey. Let him talk, Strike. You'll have your turn later. Yeah, well, it's my turn right now. Put away that ray gun. Look out, Commander. Give me that gun. Get back to that. Oh, oh, oh. Right. You realize what you've done? Yeah. I shot the commander-in-chief of the space patrol and this cadet. That ought to convince you I mean business. Now, come on, Ramsey. Let's go. What are you taking? The Saturn. You're going to predict the destruction of Kepler City. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, how are you at imitation? Well, this is Captain Dick Tufel speaking, and here's my idea of how a cosmic surface car sounds with just ordinary fuel in its tank. But, 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 but. <laughs> well, now, here's that same car with super fuel in its tank. But, 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 but. <laughs> yes, sir, that cosmic surface car is really roaring now because it's supercharged with super fuel. And the same is true with you, gang. What happens to you when you have ordinary fuel for breakfast? Well, you move like this. But, 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 but. That's right. You're just a putt-putt. But when you fill up your tank with super fuel, man, you're supercharged. So eat a power breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks and get supercharged. Flavor galore in every bite-sized biscuit. Rice checks, wheat checks. And inside of every package, you get a mysterious magic space picture. And now, back to our space patrol adventure, the sleeping demon of Saturn. Dr. Ramsey has perfected the method of predicting quakes. Two criminals, Shrike and Gresham, plan to force the doctor to predict a quake and eruption of a volcano near Kepler City on the planet Saturn. This, they figure, will create a near panic in the city thus enabling them to dispose of defective spaceships at an enormous profit to people anxious to leave the danger area. When Dr. Ramsey attempted to tell the commander of Shrike's threat, Shrike whipped out a ray gun, rendered Buzz and Happy unconscious, then forced the quake expert to accompany him to Saturn. Now, an hour later, the two space patrolmen are regaining consciousness in the doctor's apartment in Mercury City. <laughs> I almost had him, Commander, but he turned the gun on me. He must have been out for about an hour. Shrike could be off Mercury by now. Where's Dr. Ramsey? Shrike probably took him along. Well, what kind of business would he have with Dr. Ramsey? Whatever it was, it was crooked. The minute Dr. Ramsey started to tell us, Shrike pulled a gun. Let's get to Mercury City headquarters and send out an alarm. Where are we now, Shrike? We just crossed the Mars orbit. How's the doc? I slipped something in his coffee to put him to sleep. That'll hold him till we reach Saturn. Good. We'll keep Ramsey pretty well under cover. But we'll be around with our quake detecting equipment, setting it up in the region of the volcano. We'll be seen by spaceships and atmosphere cruisers, lugging heavy equipment up and down the slope of the sleeping demon. Every three or four days, we'll uh, come back to Kepler City looking very grim and worried. Well, like we found out bad news, huh? Exactly. And we'll uh, drop a few hints, just enough to get people worried. Like the volcano is going to erupt? Yes. The wise boys will figure the authorities aren't letting the people know what's going on. So everybody will try to outwit everybody else to save his own skin. How long is it going to take? Mm, it'll have to work in about three days. So we can have our men sell the ships and then clear out. By the time the space patrol gets wind of it, we'll be gone. Happy, are all those agents' reports in? All except Jupiter and Neptune, sir. All negative. No word on Shrike, Gresham, or Dr. Randy. It's been three days now. Shrike may dispose of the doctor just to keep him from talking. Oh, sir, there's a message for you here to call Jupiter City headquarters. Is it from Congress? Well, I don't know, sir. I just said Station 22. 
Strike is supposed to operate out of Jupiter City. Maybe Congress found out something. Commander Corey at Mercury City Headquarters calling Jupiter City Space Patrol Headquarters, Station 23. Commander Corey calling Station 23, Jupiter City Headquarters. Jupiter City Headquarters, Station 23, Tonga. Have you located Strike? No, Commander. We can almost be certain that neither he nor Gresham came to Jupiter City after they blasted up the Mercury. And you probably haven't anything on Dr. Ramsey either. What kind of rumor, Tonga? I heard it from an engineer who just got in from Kepler City on Saturn. He repeated it only because he thought it was a joke. Some people in Kepler City think Dr. Ramsey is making quake tests around the sleeping demons. The inactive volcano near the city? Yes. Well, it doesn't make much sense. If Dr. Ramsey were there, he'd let the authorities know he was all right. The engineer says he talked to two intelligent men in Kepler City who are convinced that the sleeping demon is going to erupt. Well, that's impossible. It's a dangerous rumor if it catches hold. I'm glad you told me about this, Tonga. I want you to contact Professor Hammond at the Jupiter University. Professor Hammond? Yes. He's also an expert on quakes. Tell him to go to Kepler City, explain the situation to him, and tell him that we want a public assurance from him that the city isn't in danger. All right, Commander. And Tonga, when you reach Kepler City, check on the source of those rumors. Hurry out. <coughs> Professor Hammond may be able to make people disregard the rumor. I'd like to find out what's behind it. You and I'll pay a surprise visit. Hello, Commander. Yes, right, we better get out of here quick. What's the matter, Gresham? Just found out that Corey's assistant security chief is here in Kepler City. What about it? That doesn't mean she's looking for us. No, but she showed up with another expert on quakes, a Professor mm-hmm. Hammond from Jupiter University. Just released a statement that the public has nothing to fear. The volcano won't erupt. No quakes are possible in this region. <laughs> Good. That's wonderful. What's so wonderful about it? He's going to buy our spaceships after they hear what Hammond says. Who's going to listen to Hammond when the sleeping demon starts spouting molten lava? What are you talking about? The volcano isn't going to erupt. It will. With a boost from a cosmic bomb dropped into the crater. Huh? We'll put a time fuse on it so it'll blow up in about 12 hours. Of course, it won't be enough of an eruption to harm the city, but it'll panic the population... Then we'll do plenty of business. Make Hammond look silly. Not only that, but nobody will believe anything the local authorities say after that. It'll be every man for himself. What about Ramsey? We'll put him in a space suit and leave him near the top of the crater. The volcano will erupt before he gets down. And Dr. Ramsey will never be seen again. Well, let's work fast. I want to get out of this. There's a sleeping demon in the viewscope, Happy. Wow, that's some crater. Impressive, but perfectly harmless. Kepler City's ten miles east of the volcanic peak, just from the outer side. Right, and that's the Dardana River that flows past the base of the peak. Right. When we get closer, you can see how the water has worn away the lava on the edge of the riverbank. That shows that the last eruption of the sleeping demon was thousands and thousands of years ago. Assistant Security Chief Tonga calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Tonga calling Commander Corey. Corey here, go ahead. Commander, you were right about those rumors. There's more to them than I thought. What did you find out, Tonga? The two men who have been making quake tests near the volcano fit the descriptions of Shrike and Gresham. The third may be Dr. Ramsey. Where are they now? They blasted up from Kepler City Spaceport several hours ago. So far, they haven't come back yet. Have you found out where they're staying in the city? Yes, I have. It's at 147 North Polaris. Well, watch it, Tonga. If they show up, notify headquarters. Yes, Commander. Uh, there's one thing more. An atmosphere ship reported seeing a man in a spacesuit on the south slope of the volcano. He seemed to be under stress. He kept waving. All right, Tonga. We'll check the slope before entering the atmosphere shell. Corey out. The south slope. That's the side toward the river. Cut our velocity, Happy. We'll see if we can find them. I don't see anyone, sir. The lava's so jagged and covered with mounds and gullies. If our man is in the shadow, we'll never see him. And if it's Shrike or Gresham, he doesn't want us to. Now wait. Something moved down there, near the bottom of the slope. I see it, sir. It's a man in a spacesuit, and he's waving. Get our spacesuits out of the locker, Happy. We'll land on that level space near the river and go after him. No, 
looks right. We've dropped the bomb in the crater and left Ramsey down on the slope. Now let's get back to the city. Don't be stupid, Gresham. We'll show up an hour after the volcano erupts with a story of how we tried to rescue our companion. But the lava got to him before we did. Who's going to bother listening to us then? We'll all be running around trying to leave the city. Sure, but at least we'll have an alibi in case we need it. Uh-oh. Look down there at the face of the slope. Face Yes, and it's Corey's. You must have spotted Ramsey. Let's get out of here, quick. Wait till we're sure they're out of sight of their ship, and we'll set down near it. I'll blast off in Terra 5 and meet you in Turquoise Canyon, north of here. The sleeping demon will be spouting lava in about 15 minutes. If Corey's ship is gone, we'll get him... I don't like the idea of coming back to Kepler City. We've got to destroy all evidence that we were here, then we can blast off. Besides, the whole town's excited over that volcano. They won't notice us. Uh, let's get inside, finish up what we have to do. I want to get away from here. Don't be in such a rush. We'd better stick around and keep track of our salesmen. We don't want to be double-crossed on those spaceship sales. Right, here we are. Well, well. Gresham, we have company. Huh? Grab her, Gresham. There we are, both of you. I've got it, Greg. Let go! Hold her, Gresham. Now, <coughs> yeah, that changes my plans. We'll have to finish it right here. Then we'll blast off. Hurry up, then. There may be other space patrol agents around. You're so right. Corey, get your ray gun, Gresham. Not this time you don't. I'll get you right, sir. Oh. Oh. All right, Happy. Pick up their weapons. Yes, sir. Are you all right, Tonga? Yes, Commander. And I've got the names of the rest of the gang. On your feet, Strike. How'd you get away from that volcano? It was simple. You just floated down the river on a rock. Let's go. You floated down... You don't expect me to believe that. This uh, Saturn is a very strange planet, Strike. If it's got an extinct volcano that erupts, well, it surely can have rocks that float. <laughs> you heard the Commander. Come on, let's go. An exciting preview of next week's adventure in just a moment. It's a dark night, pitch black. The night you first see the purple comet. At first, it's just a blur. Then you see it clearly, a fiery comet flying through the dark. It's hard to believe, and yet you can see it. A huge ball of purple fire. You know what you've been looking at? An atomic particle on a two-inch slide. And you've been seeing it through a microscope, the Space Patrol Microscope. Buzz Corey said it to you, and boy, are you glad. This amazing microscope magnifies objects 15 times their natural size. 
And with it, you also got that terrific slide containing the atomic particle. Yes, sir, space patrollers, that's the kind of fun you'll have when you send for your official space patrol microscope. And you not only get the mystery slide with the atomic particle on it, you get more slides, four more, all crystal clear. Slides you place tiny objects on. And when you do that and place them under your microscope, wow, you see objects 15 times their natural size. You see details that leave you blinking in surprise. Insects look like men from Mars. A human hair reminds you of a giant python snake. Why, you actually see the living creatures in the drop of water. What a microscope! What power! What magic! And just think, it's pocket size. You can take it with you everywhere, just five inches high. Yet it magnifies objects 15 times. And built, man, oh man, solid plastic body, solid plastic lens tube, solid glass lens optically ground. Scientific guide chart and foolproof markings for accuracy built right on the microscope examination platform. And the lens tube can be used all by itself to examine objects like the bark on trees, rust on tin cans, the webs of spiders. But don't wait. Send for this thrilling, thrilling Space Patrol microscope kit today. Just buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are aboard the deluxe passenger spaceship, the Supernova, headed for the planet Saturn. As they enter a private compartment in search of a criminal, the occupant of the compartment pulls a ray gun on them. Just keep moving down the corridor, Commander. You too, Cadet. You're going to a lot of trouble. You must be counting on taking quite a lot of money from Grayson. Think what you like. All right, hold it. This is where we part company. Just open this little metal door. Now, crawl in there, both of you. You can't put us in there. It's the ship's rubbish disposal chute. I know what it is. Get in. Well, before we reach Saturn, that chute will be emptied. Into space. Yes, Commander. A blast of compressed air will sweep you out of the ship. And no one will know where you've gone. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, Trouble Aboard the Supernova, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Wilson again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Special bulletin for boys and girls in Altoona and Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and Albany, New York. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it. The Ralston Rocket. <laughs> Gang, here's how you can make your own Space Patrol helmet. All you need are things like cardboard and paper clips. Read all about it in the August issue of Woman's Day magazine. Tells you how to make an official Space Patrol guard helmet and desert crash helmet. <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Deverick. <laughs> Other players were Nina Barra, Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, and Stephen Robertson. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Wilson again present... Space Patrol! Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.